What's up y'all, it's Brandon from Us Gaming, and we're back with the AQD uh, playthrough. Uh, and I just saw that my energy was a little bit on the low side, so let's get that taken care of before anything else happens. So, uh, last time, um, I believe where we left off was getting the trailer hooked up to the rover. So, I had a couple of thoughts about how that could work. Um, but first, kind of need to find a way to get this trailer off of here and get the rover up here. So, let's see if we got any concrete, and if not, I'm going to go ahead and cook some up. Uh, here we go, concrete. Nope. Alright, so, go back to the basic assembler, and... We're not going to get that many, but at least, you know, chew up the gravel. Uh, I am starting to be a fan of the concrete mod that's a part of this. Um, that uses just gravel for random things. Well, not random things. Specifically, uh, specifically building blocks. Because steel plates, I mean, it, it, building something like this, especially early game, gets kind of expensive. But building it with gravel? Yeah, it's totally doable. So let's grab some of that. There we go. Whoa, I didn't want gravel. There we go. Concrete. Okay. So let's see what kinds of blocks we got for ramps. We have half blocks, half block slopes, concrete slopes. Okay, that might be the best we got. Um. Well, it's also going up a hill, so we could potentially just take it straight until it goes into the voxel, like that. That's probably a better option anyway, so let's just do that. Uh, that's close enough. And... Continue this out. And last stretch. Really, so close. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's really close to the box. So let's see if we can't make this a straight line for the future. That's like really close. So either I'd want to bring it one further out. Yeah, I can do that. There. And then we can just use the slope for the very end of it. There. Alright, so let's get uh let's get the truck up there. Sounds like it's still got ice in here. Let's just make sure that. Not a whole lot. Let's fill her up. Can turn around there. There we go. And ice. And then more in the cockpit. Cool. Uh, maybe one more round to fill up the cockpit as well. Just before we get too far away from the ice supply. And there we go. Good enough. Let's go and hop in. See how we did. Yeah, 
I think that works pretty well. All right. So let's go ahead and drop the trailer. Should this one and then that one. There we go. All right. Now how do we connect A to B? Um, one of my thoughts was to use um, a hinge for up and down and then a rotor for side to side as well and then one more rotor for the twist. Um, but I think I'm just going to go with the kind of classic version. So first of all let's grab our suspensions and turn the height up, set up to maximum. Let's go ahead and also turn off uh, steering and propulsion. And then I'm also going to set the friction down to like 20. Uh, as much as I don't want this going anywhere, um, I also kind of need to be able to turn with it. So let's see. And also, uh, the test from last time, um, I think it might just be because I changed mods um, that uh, I lost all the different things because obviously this one's still here. So, all right, so we got the hinge that is small grid as well. Cool. And then I need a rotor. Sweet. So, I think the side to side, actually, you know what, let's go with the rotor on the main vehicle, and I'm going to extend it out just a little bit, so let's grab the correct coloring, extend it out just a little bit. Kind of like a trailer hitch. Grab a rotor. I want to make sure zero is directly at the top. There we go. Right off the rotor part. Build a bunch of that and then uh, grab the parts of the rest. So one second. Okay. Cool. Oh. Somehow I misplaced that. There we go. All right, so we got the rotor. And now over on this guy, we're going to drop our small hinge. Uh, actually, no, I need to extend that out a little bit as well. So let's drive this forward a little bit. So that actually extends out a block beyond the wheel. I probably want at least seven blocks distance between the two. Um, just to get like a decent amount of uh, turning radius when I'm driving with the trailer. So that's going to be th one, two, three. So let's take the freebie. One. Just give it like back line like this one has. Then I guess we do the same thing. Two. Three. 
or maybe more like this. One, two. Ah, stop it. Stop it. Three. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll have one in the center, which should be seven. That should work. So then, I think we'll do our vertical hinge here. Seeing the top part of it, I think that is the way I want to go with it. Let's go ahead and set the uh, hinge lock to on. And then finally, we can do our horizontal hinge. Right there. This one probably doesn't matter. We're going to set the hinge lock on there as well. Cool. So let's get this built up. All right. So the last part of this is going to be a rotor part right there. I know I don't need the small steel tubes, but I already have them made up, so I might as well use them. And just, you know, make it that much tougher. There we go. Then... I think if I hop in here... Just a little bit creative. And get it in the right general area. Okay, so back it up a smidge more. Ooh, that's close. That's really close. I don't know if that's going to lock, though. So I'm going to grab this hinge, and we're going to turn the lock off. Let's try... Okay, so we want negative velocity. There we go. Let's line it up a little bit better. Please tell me that worked. Alright, here we go. Hoping for no clang. Boom! It worked! We're connected! Oh boy. Okay. So now we need to set some limits. Uh, I need to set this one to a lower limit of, let's say, five degrees. And upper uh, negative five degrees, and a upper limit of five degrees. It'll give it a little bit of rotation. I don't think I want this hinge to go any further than it already is, because that is really tight on the length there. So we are at okay. So let's set our lower limit to negative 20 right there and our upper limit to the same positive 20 there we go then we're going to go ahead and toggle it off so that it can move freely braking torque is zero cool and I think that's about all we need. So then we have this guy. We can go to... a lower limit of not negative 90. I think I'm going to set it to the same negative... Ooh. Let's go negative 20. 
an upper limit of positive 20. We'll see if that works and then adjust accordingly. I may need to increase that. All right, and then toggle off. And breaking torque zero, hinge lock off. All right, should allow it to swing freely. And lastly, this tiny little rotor over here. Let's go here. Uh, rotor lock off, toggle block off. Okay. Sorry, I keep swinging around. That's to uh, turn off build vision. Yeah, build vision. I keep mixing that and build info up because they're a little bit on the similar side. But I think it should be all we need to pull this thing. I'm seeing that these wheels are not spinning, so let's go to the suspensions. Um, let's turn them off. Oh. Not those. Oh wait, those are the ones I want off. These are the ones I want on. Okay, let's try that again. I do know about the subgrid wheel control script, by the way. Um, I do like using it. However, um, <laughs> I don't have scripts available to me at this time, so I can't really use it. Okay. Seems pretty stable so far. Uh, we're going to take it on a little test drive, make sure all the limits seem about correct. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was a little lucky. Uh, we're going to set us a limit. Our speed limit. It's a little bit lower than that. So speed limit 180, let's try 120. Okay. So that's just gonna keep on swinging around like that. Maybe if I set my left one, right one steering angle to lower, maybe let's try 15 degrees, that'll fix it. Looks like that worked. And then eventually when I can get the subgrid wheel control scripts going, uh, that'll make this work even better. But for now, uh, I think I'm going to fill up the cargo containers of the uh, trailer. Actually, it's... Get that a little bit closer. Like there. Then I'm going to fill up the cargo containers of this with uh, ice and I think after that we might be good to uh, take a trip. 
Uh... Oh yeah, uh, the solar panels. Um... Uh, I did actually forget about those, but I'm also not entirely sure where or how I could reasonably put those on here. Um, because, I mean, originally the idea was for this to be mostly a solar power trailer, but at this point it's primarily hydrogen powered. So, let's instead worry about getting the, uh, about getting the tank full. Good, those are off. Let's get the tank full. So that we have some backup power for the trip. And so that we can charge this thing a little bit more effectively when we get back. So, I'm going to be right back as soon as I have... Um, honestly, probably a full tank. Uh, yeah, full tank of gas. And then I can, you know, deal with hydrogen engines later. Yeah. I'll be right back. And we're back. So, uh, we're not quite 100% filled up on this. Uh, I can show it's like a little bit over 90%. But, it'll basically be filled up by the time, uh, by the time I finish talking we're ready to take off. Um... So, I did take the time to uh, put together the materials for a couple of the contracts I picked up. Um, I wasn't able to uh, get a whole lot of them, um, because a lot of these I picked up under the assumption that I'd be able to build a uh, flying cargo vehicle, which I have not yet. Um, that said, I do have a plan for it. So if we head over here to the research lab and go to production, you can see that I've actually queued up, um, oh, where are you? I believe it's the hydrogen thrust. Yeah, there it is, the hydrogen thrust, which we're working on right now. So that, oh, well, I should probably swap it over to, uh, I should probably swap that over to, uh, I think it's advanced item transfer, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. there. Now you're not missing items anymore, and we're just waiting on that. Anyway. Um, but yeah, with the hydrogen thrust, we can use the metal grids we have to build a small, and I, I do mean very small, uh, hydrogen-powered cargo ship that we'd then be able to transport over to um, the station on a trailer, so it's not burning hydrogen all the way, and it would also serve as our ground to space vehicle. But considering I've been sitting here for at least an hour, maybe more than that, I, I kind of lost track of time to be honest, waiting for this thing to fill up, I kind of wanted to make sure that it was within our current means of ice collection and uh, refining capabilities to actually be able to run a small hydrogen ship. So, if we head over here, I actually worked out the math. Uh, I think it might be easier if I uh, open this up. So, uh, the basic idea would be to fill a small, large grid hydrogen tank full of hydrogen. Um, and then that would supply us for, uh, for a couple of missions or however long that goes. A large grid O2H2 generator, which we have, produces about 500 liters per second of hydrogen. Uh, which means it'll take about 2,000 seconds or a little bit over half an hour in order to fill this tank. That's absolutely doable. I can go do some runs for the station. I can uh, be working on something else in the meantime. That's a completely reasonable time to fill this thing up. Uh, but how much ice is that going to take? Well, the ice to gas ratio, at least according to the wiki, I haven't actually checked this in game. Uh, is apparently 20 liters to one kilogram. So that's 20 liters of hydrogen to one kilogram of ice. So that means that we'll need 50,000 kilograms of ice uh, um, by mass. But that doesn't quite tell me how much ice I need to get, that just tells me the mass I need to get. 
uh, because ice is usually, I believe, measured in uh, liters, not kilograms. So I need to convert that over to liters. Now ice, uh, just like all other ores, by the way, happens to have a conversion ratio uh, mass to volume of one kilogram to zero point, sorry, one kilogram of ice or the other ore, if we're talking about something else, to 0 0.37 liters of that particular material which means that the volume of ice that we'll need in order to um, refine up a million Energy liters low. of hydrogen, I'm gonna ignore that for right now, uh, the volume of ice we'll need in order to refine up that much hydrogen is 18,500 liters. Roughly speaking, um, a medium cargo container and small grid contains about 3,000 uh, liters of material. Uh, that's not exact. I think it's like 3,750 technically, but if we guesstimate to uh, 3,000, that means this is about six small grid medium cargo containers of ice. I'll get to that in a second. But all this, uh, but the design I have in mind is one small grid hydrogen tank. So that's about you know half the capacity of that tank. So the total cost for the mission ends up being 9,250 ice and about 16 and a half minutes of refining time. All of which is completely within our capabilities right now without adding any additional infrastructure or machines. Remember how I mentioned I get to um, the six small grid medium cargo containers and how that worked out so perfectly by accident? The truck as six small grid medium cargo containers. So we can literally use this as our measuring stick um, to fill up the entire um, hydrogen tank once um, using like three of these. Uh, sorry, uh, to fill up the larger and small hydrogen tank once, it would take all six of these roughly. And then in order to uh, fill up the, uh, the uh, vehicle once, the small grid vehicle, it would take three of these. In other words, what we can do is we can um, fill this up once, put that into our base, let it refine up and fill the, um, let it refine up and then fill the hydrogen tank, the storage tank and then fill up one of these again, put that in our base right before we Energy leave, critical. so that it can uh, replenish itself and be full again by the time we get back. Uh, so, I think that's a completely doable goal. Uh, I just need to do the research though, and I would like to see a few more metal grids so that I know I'm not taking away from any potential atmosphere vehicles. I might be able to create Actually, no, I can't create atmospheric, atmospheric vehicles at all until I research. I'm in the right one. Until I research um, jet engines. Um, which in turn requires the upscaled hydrogen thrusters, which is the larger ones. Um, so this is going to take quite a bit of cobalt, like I think that's 160 enhanced research materials. No, no, it's not 160 enhanced research. Actually, no, it is because I don't want the large grid hydrogen thrusters yet. So we go over here, production, mod components, enhanced research materials. A hundred, I think it was 160 of these. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and uh, it's, it's, oh, let's make sure it, it's off first. And 160. It's going to require 500 cobalt enhanced. Okay. So I don't even have... I'm, I'm nowhere near 530 cobalt ingots. Not even if I break down all my metal grids. So I'm going to have to get a lot more of those. But I think that might be yep this thing is in fact 100 percent full 
So let's go ahead and uh, turn off the O2H. Actually, no. First of all, let's turn off the hydrogen engine. There it is. The O2H2 generators. Toggle those off. And then... I think it's just the one engine that's filling up uh, just these batteries plus those over there. So I think this might be a good time to park the trailer and disconnect it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's try and work out a good place to park this thing. The best idea I have is to back it straight into this spot, at least for right now. No, 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 don't jackknife. Straight now. Back it up again. Very slowly. Good enough. All right. So that's in a place where if it's going to roll away, it's going to roll into here and bump into the blocks. I think. Go ahead and disconnect at the rotor. Let's go ahead and. Actually. Better idea. Better idea. Let's. Let's engage hinge lock on these guys. Uh, that way they won't go flopping all over the place and I'll have to play with the later. So then, let's go ahead and detach. That's going to roll pretty slowly into the blocks as intended. And we are free to go. All right. So, uh, ooh. As I realize something, I need lights on here. If I'm if I'm gonna be driving this, like anywhere at night, I need lights. So let's grab some construction components. Uh, oh, research materials. I need to move those over. There's some construction components. Let's go in and move the research materials over. Um, that's got everything it needs. We got all those done. So the only thing I won't be able to do is probably get um, the heavy duty wheels done, but I think that'll be fine. So. Uh, now that I got the construction components, where... I think I need to grab the spotlight. Okay, so I can add something here. I'm gonna go ahead and add something on here I've kinda wanted to, uh... Try... Okay, so that would actually require steel plate. Okay, not gonna worry about that for right now. That also requires steel plate. Okay, let's let's just grab some steel plates. Uh, let's grab twenty. Should be more than enough. All right, so I think that's the right color. So let's go ahead and add them. Maybe right up here for now. That looks not too weird. Should give some decent light. Let's grab the components. Weld them up. Cool. And as for the rest, I 
think I kind of want to go offset spotlight in vertical right here. Or no, let's do let's do offset spotlights sideways like that, and then offset lights. So that's going to require some bulletproof glass. Okay. Let's go and grab uh, those into the build planner. There we go. Offset lights. Uh, anywhere else I need lights? Uh, don't necessarily want to use a light panel in here. But I do think an interior light would look good. Or good enough. Maybe... So that's where I'd want to put that. Um, let's try centering it right along this card container right here. Just for some literal interior light. There's for the front. Um, you know what, yeah. Uh, actually, no, let's go double corner light. Remember, eventually I am hoping to swap this over to... Ooh, control panel access. Okay. Uh, I am hoping to swap this over to um, a control seat at some point, so it's not going to stay like this for long. So I think that should give it some nice lighting when that happens. As for the side... Did I put one on this side? No, I did not. Um... Let's see. What looks good? Mm. That's kind of floaty. It'll pass. Maybe one like here and one on the back. the best, but I think it works. And do the same thing over here. There's that, and there's that. And then for the back, I'm going to go with an offset light here and here. Another set over here and here. There we go. The idea being one of those is going to be bright white and the other is going to be dull red for brake lights. So let's go and grab that bulletproof glass. That's a solid amount of light right there. I like that. All right. So now we just got to worry about the undercarriage. Uh, actually, no. No, I think it'll be fine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play with uh, play with these lights and their ranges and such a little bit, and uh, I'll be back when I got something. And we're back. Uh, so most of these I just pretty much turn down the intensity to uh, 3 and increase the radius to 5. Uh, on the back here I set these two to full red and very low radius but very high intensity so that they'd be bright but not actually you know reflect on too much things. 
then on the well, front I did kind of the same thing as the rest. Turn down intensity, uh, turn up radius to 5. And the interior in the back, I decided to make this a slightly better lit area. Um, so this is, we go into the settings here. Uh, so this is a radius of 3 meters with an intensity of 3. Uh, so it's actually the same intensity as the others, but it looks a lot brighter because it's a smaller area. Uh, I also set it to be just a little bit yellow uh, to kind of offset the yellow of the cargo containers. Then the front, I decided to go for a soft red with a very low radius, low intensity light for both of the interior lights. Uh, that is also partially because I don't want them leaking out to uh, the exterior of the build. Um, but I do want it to be like, okay, this is the uh, this is the night vision uh, driving look. Because red doesn't actually ruin your night vision. Uh, I could also use green for this, but red, I think, works a little bit better. Anyway, that would be all the lighting for this thing. I think we are actually ready to head out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start driving. Uh, I'm going to know pretty quickly if this is not an appropriate amount of light to be driving with at night but uh, also let's check our hydrogen engine still working just fine although we may have literally just run out of ice the two generator nope still got some okay but I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the O2H2 generator actually no yeah let's keep that off and then shut off the hydrogen engine as well. Yeah, silence. Uh, that way we're not bar burning ice when we don't need to, because our batteries, I believe, are right around half full. Uh, a little bit more than half. A little bit more than half. Like, about three quarters, I think. Yeah. So we should be good for a trip, and then I'll have to uh, come back and recharge. Which is why, build that tank. Yeah, I can drive it like this. Alright. So with that, I think I'll... Oop. Please hold. Our suspensions... Need a higher speed limit. There we go. So I think with that, I'm going to drive off into the sunrise. And see you guys when we get to the station. So I'll be right back. And we have made it back to the station. Whew. Uh, this was actually a terrifying drive because of something I'm sure at least some of you may have noticed, and that is I forgot to put any kind of gyroscopes on this vehicle. So, uh, yeah, that's what we call an oops, and I'm, and an I'm glad it didn't come back to bite me kind of thing. I'm going to go and stash these over here. I can take, looks like, at least three of those at once. Uh, can I get four? Yeah, I can get four of those at once. There's no way I'm going to be able to carry all those small steel tubes at once, though. But... Be able to get four contracts, and let's check out what they happen to have in stock. Do they have more metal grids? I may do a few more missions like all day. Uh, enhanced grinders. That's that's uh, cobalt, and I'm not seeing any others. More thruster components, um, but I think... How many hands grinders do you got? 300... Oh, <laughs> you got five. Um, I forget how many cobalt ingots it takes to make an enhanced grinder. But, I mean, I guess it's something. Actually, no, I should probably be saving. Yeah, I'm going to save for the next time that it's in stock. Just gonna turn these in and uh, probably call it good. So let's see, solar cells, finish, 
confirm. Uh, computers, I think I have those. Uh, detector components, same thing. Don't have the displays, motors, motor group, OS, nickel. And then you get those next. All right. So with that, and I forgot to check the amount. I'm at 204. It's a solid start. Gonna go ahead and grab. the small steel tubes and turn those in as well small steel tubes yeah that was kind of a big one there we go all right, let's see if there's any more acquisition contracts that I can do. Uh, it's pretty solid. 11 canvas, 88 liters. I can do that. And then 20 nickel ingots. Really? Like 10,000? Eh. That'll work. Uh, 20, 30 radiocom components. I wouldn't accept that even if I could do it. <laughs> Oh, nope, not a chance. That is a hefty acquisition contract, though. I am going to accept this one, even though I can't do it um, quite yet, because it'll give me a target um, number for the lifting capacity for the vehicle. Uh, so let's see if we go into our contracts. This says 2,571 liters, but there's 857 steel plate in there. That is actually a pretty heavy item. It's one of the heavier ones, as I recall. So in order to carry this, I'm gonna make I'm gonna need to make sure that I can carry at least that many steel plates. In terms of volume, I think this large steel tube one is gonna be my target. Uh, and that's a little bit over 7,000 liters. So, That design process, yeah, I think I might cut this one a little bit short. That design process is going to take place next week. Uh, I'm also going to drive this thing back uh, very carefully um, because, and I know I haven't shown this yet, but uh, there's actually two world borders along the path that I take. So, you know those giant lines of like you know flat walls sometimes and then giant valleys some other times and then once in a while it gets flat yeah i got across two of those with no gyros so i'm i'm not really looking forward to uh the trip back but it is what it is so i'm gonna go ahead and head back uh and next time we're gonna be building a small grid cargo ship small grid hydrogen cargo ship so thank you guys for watching if you like if you like the video please be sure to leave a like and uh don't forget to subscribe if uh you don't want to miss the rest of my extended look at aqd mods again thank you guys for watching and i will see y'all later